Who said Makita had stopped making 18 volt tools? This is the new LXT 18 volt DHG181 heat gun. In the States, I'm guessing it'll be the XGH01. So we'll do some tests with it up against this old heat gun. This is the one I've been using for years. Black and Decker, made in England. El Cheapo heat gun. What are these puppies? And we'll test the temperature with this. First, I'll tell you some of the features. It has two speeds, 120 litres of air per minute and 200 litres of air per minute. It has an LED light. On the back, it has this interesting loop here, which when you push this button, pops up and becomes a hook to hang your tool up over something pretty thin. Small pipe, a bit of wire, sheet metal, something like that. And then just clips back into place, quite cool. That also helps you when you need to stand it on its back. The temperature dial is on the back here, starting at one and going all the way through to six. One basically being just the ambient temperature in the room. So you'd use that for cooling things down after you have heated them up. And then once you get to two, you start heating things up. You might use that for just drying off paint, that sort of stuff. As you move up through, it gets hotter, of course, leading right up to top which should be 550 degrees and you'd use that for bending pipes and heat shrink and that sort of stuff. The trigger has this little safety lever that you have to push down first before you can push the trigger in. Once you have pushed the trigger in, there is a button on the side. Push that in and it holds your tool on. Interesting that it's okay to keep a heat gun turned on permanently, but not a tire inflator. Touch the trigger again and it will turn your tool off. Or of course you can just hold your finger on the trigger. The front black piece here rotates to eject your nozzles. It comes with four nozzles and a case. Even though I purchased this as a bare tool, skin only, no charger, no battery, it still comes in a case, which is nice. In the case you have your tool, four attachments and an instruction manual. Just having a plastic container, is that really clever for a tool like this? I would have thought you'd want it in a metal one if you were using something like this all the time. Or at least maybe a, a hardwood one. Because if this is really hot, these are hot and you chuck them back in here, it's just going to melt straight through the plastic. Now this is how this comes in this part of the world. It may be slightly different where you come from. Maybe you don't get the case. Maybe you get different nozzles. Let's take a look at the nozzles that have come with my kit. This is what Makita refer to as the glass protection nozzle. According to Makita, you use this to remove old window putty. Next up, the wide slot nozzle. According to Makita, this is the exact words. This is for heat packaging for heat shrink films. Next up, the reflector nozzle, which we'll be using in this video. This is used for bending pipe and doing large heat shrink. And last but not least, we have a reduction nozzle used for stripping paint. Those are all the official Makita reasons for those nozzles. As well as those nozzles, there are three other ones shown in the manual, which are an overlap welding nozzle for welding vinyl sheets and plastic sheets, that sort of stuff. A thinner version of a reflector for small heat shrink. And there's also a reduction nozzle that gets smaller than this and longer. And according to Makita, that's for heating concentrated over small areas for welding, for instance, if you're heating up an area to weld. By welding, we're talking like plastic welding. You're not going to be welding steel or anything with this. If at any point you want more information or you want to buy one, take a look down in the description. There'll be some links down there for lots of different places around the world, so check that out. And let me know what you use yours for, if you've got one, or if you want one, what you would use it for. I reckon it'd be quite good camping, actually. <laughs> like, if you're in a tent, or you're in a camper van, a van, you're sleeping, it's a bit chilly. Put this on, it doesn't blow too fast, so it's relatively safe. Don't stick it next to nylon on a tent, obviously. But yeah, might be quite handy for that. Just to take the chill off the air. Don't go setting yourself on fire in a tent, okay? Now on the 10th of December last year, I was sent this stuff. And this is from a guy called Vincent over in the States. And he wanted me to test whether this heat gun could do the job of putting on this heat shrink. Onto these, up on top of a power pole. So he wanted to know if he could use this in wind and whether that would have enough guts and stuff to do the job so that he didn't have to take up a blowtorch. Vincent, I know it's been a long time coming. Makita kept pushing back the heat gun and I don't think you're going to be very happy with the result. I haven't tried it yet, but I think the blowtorch is going to do it much quicker. And with a bit of wind, I don't think this is going to have much heat at all. 
I'm going to use a 5 amp hour battery for this test. I might do a run time with a 6 amp hour later on. We'll see how we go for time. But first up, let's just, I'll crank this up onto its highest setting. I'll let this warm up for a minute. And then I will start seeing if I can heat shrink some of this stuff. I've got it on the highest setting, highest wind speed, highest heat. Give these a bit of a warm up first. Failure number one. Let's try again. Tricky filming with this on a workbench, you've got to be careful where you fire this thing so that I don't burn nothing. I think it's going to be pretty slow. Pretty slow doing such thick heat shrink. You can see it changing shape, but yeah, taking a while. I think we'll um, have a go with the blowtorch and just see how quick it does it, eh? Let's count this side off. Ten seconds. Twenty seconds to get that, roughly. So about twenty seconds just to get one side to come in a bit. That's um, not the greatest, is it? I'm pretty sure the blowtorch is going to do it much quicker. The blowtorch I'll be using is the burns matic TS8000, which was also supplied to me by Vincent. Cheers for that, mate. Um, I bought the gas in New Zealand, of course, because you can't go shipping that around the place. I think this is going to do a much quicker job, even if it is potentially a bit more dangerous. Whoops, got it a little bit close there, didn't I? I've um, <laughs> well and truly shrunk it and um, actually melted it a bit there. So, yeah, a bit further away. It's kind of hard when you're looking at a camera screen and not what you're doing, making sure that you've got it in shot. Let's try from that. So, much, much quicker, uh, but you need to have a bit more practice, of course, in the art of doing this than I currently have, because I'm not used to using a blowtorch on such massive big heat shrink like that. Heat gun's definitely a safer option without a big flame coming out the front, so that's a positive, but I think for speed and actual functionality, it's not gonna cut the mustard. But we'll try this properly. This heat shrink has a glue in it. As you can see here, it sort of melts and oozes out when you are using the heat shrink. Let's heat it up just to give it a bit more stick and make it a bit more waterproof presumably. Is the heat gun going to have enough oomph to melt that? Let's give it a whirl. Got a good amount of wind blowing through here at the moment. I just looked it up. It's over 30 kilometers an hour so that's good. That'll be a good test for the heat gun here and I'm going to time it. Freshly charged 5 amp hour battery. Top speed. Top heat. Might be a good test for the length of time the battery can last as well. Because this is going to take a while. Right, we've now been going for 10 minutes. 10 minutes and it's done, but only just. I'm going to let it run now for our, our runtime test, seeing as we've gotten this far. So after 10 minutes, half gone. I can hear it slowing down now. What do we get to? 16 and a half minutes. Is that a good amount of time? Right, let's see how some tall plastic goes against this heat gun. This is, of course, you know what tool plastic is by now, right? So this is PA6, 30% glass filling, and it also has some TPE over moulding. Let's give that a blast. Just starting to bubble. That plastic is tough, man. Try the TV over moldy.
It's impressively strong, this plastic. For all those who say tools used to be better when they were made of metal, yeah, maybe they were, but this plastic's, you know, it's tough stuff. I mean, that's a lot of heat on it for a long period of time, and it barely made a mark. Does she look worried? She should. This is going to hurt you a lot more than it hurts me. Top speed, top heat. Well, it's been five minutes. I'm getting bored. I think it's time to take this up a notch. So after five minutes, the one on the left there, looking a bit rough, but probably better than what the other one's about to look like. Right, nozzle is about four inches away. Didn't think she would last too long. It was a lot quicker than five minutes. Initiate the fire recovery plan. Oh shit, I haven't got one. How do I put this out? She's definitely the worst for wear compared to the heat gun test. Now the PA6 tool plastic stood up very well against the heat gun, but how will it do against the blowy? It's pretty tough stuff, this bloody PA6, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's catching on fire and stuff, but it's still really solid. It's like, can't push through it. It hasn't melted all the way through that plastic. Even though it's relatively thin, it's still solid. It's good stuff. A lot better than what this is going to be. I look forward to the comments from those who um, yeah, are big into the old climate change. Can the blowtorch beat 10 minutes? I'm pretty confident it can. Let's go. Been blowing around a bit in the wind. Well, I don't know how long that was because I forgot to set my timer, but I know it was a damn sight quicker than 10 minutes. It's actually a little bit longer than what I thought it would do. It was blowing around in the wind a bit. don't know how easy it was to see that on the camera, but the flame was fluctuating a bit, which meant I had to keep moving it backwards and forwards, trying to find the sweet spot, and because I've, I've never actually used this sort of heat shrink before, as I'm sure I said, um, yeah. But I think it still probably beat the heat gun by quite a considerable margin. So Vincent, mate, unless you've got plenty of time on your hands, I think you're going to want to stick to the old method. These are two sample ones that Vincent sent me. These are the two that I just did. And this is the heat gun one. It took a long time to melt that glue on the inside with the heat gun. But it has done the job. It seems to be stuck on there fairly well. This is the blowtorch one. Looks pretty similar, although you can see the glue melted a lot better on the top and bottom there. So Vincent, mate, sorry, but you're probably going to have to stick to your blowtorch because unless you've got all the time in the world and a ton of batteries, it's going to be a rather painful task. And Vincent, if you're up a power pole and, um... Oh. Okay, I'm now just going to test how quick we can bubble some paint and then I'll do the same test with a corded version. I'm not going to do it with a blowtorch. I don't think the wife would be too happy with me taking a blowtorch to the side of a house. Blistering now. Taking off one layer anyway. You just see the timber starting to show through there.
It ain't a quick process. Right, this heat gun has one setting on. I guess it's got two, on and off. Right, let's see how good it is compared to the other one. Bubbling. She's a bubbling. Bubbling much bigger, much quicker, isn't it? Um, I've seen all I need to see. Oh, here comes the rain. Crikey. Right, time for some inside tests. Let's fire that off. We'll chuck this on, eh? And we'll we'll see if we can put a bit of a bend in this 20mm electrical conduit. I think I'm probably going to run it on full whack. I'll let the reflector on the front there warm up a bit. It is soft, it is starting to bend already. That softened much quicker than I thought it was going to. That's good. It's my favourite test so far. Don't want to do that, obviously. But you can see we are softening it. And that worked a lot better than I thought it was going to after the previous tests. And see that bend is slowly moving down as I heat up the pipe. Boing, 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 boing. She is very rubbery now. So yeah, it passed that test better than I thought it was going to, so that's good. A plus. Maybe I was just asking too much of it before. It's nice and squidgy. And hot! What about some smaller electrical heat shrink? Okay, I tell you what, this thing's starting to redeem itself. I'm happy with the speed of that. That has shrunk on there good and proper. Yeah, seems to be okay for small tasks. I got some windows from my shed and it had these super annoying stickers on it that I tried to peel off, couldn't get off, and I thought, oh, it's going to leave a hell of a mess. But then, chucked this on, and yeah, made it a lot easier. Heated it up, it softened it, and then I could just scrape it off in one piece. So, that was very handy. So I think maybe I was a little bit harsh on this thing to begin with. Comparing it to a blowtorch was probably a bit much, wasn't it? So it's good for small tasks, but nothing too full on. It's got this um, bit on the back here, which I don't think I've shown you. So that it sits fairly solidly on its back like that. So you can hold whatever you want to do, your marshmallows or your heat shrink over the top of it. The tool itself is very light. It comes in at 700 grams. So with a battery, you're looking at about, what, 1.3 kgs? Just over 1.3 kgs. So it didn't wow me at first, um, but I'm growing to like it. It's good for small things, like I say, and I've, I've used it for a couple of things I didn't think I would use it for, just because it's cordless and you think, oh, I'll just grab that heat gun instead of having to get out a lead and dangle the lead everywhere, and yeah. I really just can't stand extension leads and stuff anymore. I just so used to battery stuff now that it just the thought of having to pull out things and drag cords everywhere and get them all muddy and uh, just and then wind them all up and store them just yeah so I do like battery stuff but will this replace a blowtorch most definitely not will it replace a high-end corded heat gun not really um, the runtime is limiting because of the batteries of course and it just doesn't have much blow so it's not firing the heat out. You can put your hand pretty close to it as you would have seen me do sometime in this video. Oh, speaking of which, we'll end it on just how hot it is, eh? See, with that distance from the camera, I could basically run it and the camera will be okay. 
Now what I've gone and unfortunately done here is get a thermal imaging camera that only goes up to 400 degrees Celsius and this thing is rated at 550 Celsius so we've got a bit of a problem here. I tried to get the 600 degree one a while ago but I just couldn't get it and I settled for this and now it's come back to bite me in the butt. This is on the number 6 setting but on the lower fan speed and it's basically hovering right around that 400 mark just dipping below a little bit. This is a completely useless test isn't it? I guess that's why I've left it till the end. Thanks for watching guys. See you on another one soon. I'm loving it on the workshop on the cold days. It's good for just giving your arms a bit of a blast and just warming yourself up. Yeah, it's kind of like a little portable heater. You can quickly just give yourself a blast in the face to take the chill off. Probably not recommended.